Chapter 6 is all about loops and strings, and a loop is something you're going to do over and over again. There's two types, there's a while loop and a for loop, and we're going to start with the while loop. It's a little bit more simple. Uh, you'll see soon the for loop's a little bit more compact. So I have a project open called Chapter 6 Loops and Strings, and we're going to paste this right inside public static void main. Alt Shift F to format, and we're just going to go ahead and run this. And all right, I'll put it right here. Three, two, one, blast off. Why did that happen? Well, n started at three right here. The condition it checks the condition first, so it's a lot like an if statement, except the while statement runs this again and again and again until n is not greater than zero. N's an integer. So as soon as it is equal to zero, this will no longer be true because it's only greater than zero. If you wanted to go all the way to zero, just change it to greater than or equal to zero. And we run it again and it's gonna to go to zero this time. All right, let's have a little fun and let's not make n change. So what's gonna happen now, it's gonna print out the n value and print out the n value and print out the n value. There we go. Now we have a program that's running forever. If this is the first time you've had a program that ran, ran forever, congratulations. We do need to stop it. There's two ways to do it. You can hit the stop button here or you can hit this little X right there and it will ask you, you sure you want to stop? Sure am. All right, so this can happen even when you're not being silly, for example, I just did n equals n plus one, and you think, oh, n's changing, it'll be fine. Well, n is going up quite a bit, and it's still not, uh, well, it still is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, and it's gonna run for a very long time. So again, I need to hit the stop button and stop it. Okay, it will tell you, what, once they build successful, it'll say build stopped in red. All right, so let's change that back so it's not gonna run forever. So we just looked at, uh, we incremented, but we didn't really talk about it very much. And uh, the increment is n equals n minus one right there. Well, that's a decrement. Uh, we could increment instead. So we did this and ran forever. And whenever you increment, you generally wanna make sure your n value is less than something. Uh, we could add one to it. Let's go ahead and add 10 to it instead. So we'll start it at, uh, zero, and we'll add 10 to it every time. Counts up by tens, blast off. You could increment in other ways. Uh, this checks the modulus, and if it's even, it divides it by two, else it does something a bit different. So we'll go ahead and grab this code. Uh, now, when I paste it in, we're gonna see an error. All right, so what's the error say? Well, n's underlined everywhere. We could read one of these. It says, cannot find symbol n. So we need to define or initialize n. So looks like it should be an integer. It could be a float. We do need to give it a value. Uh, I think it, you should be able to tell if I set it equal to one, uh, this while statement will not run at all because immediately n is not equal to, uh, n is equal to one, which makes this uh, check false. So we'll start n at something else. We'll go 10 or maybe 20, whoa, that's not 20, 30, all right. There we go. So it's gonna run through and change these values. Sometimes it is even, uh, sometimes it is not. Now you could screw all this up. I think if we do this, Oh. oh yeah, we need to make that a float. Otherwise it defaults to a double. Oh, there we go. All right, so we'll work with that as well. It took a while to get out of decimals, but I don't want to take a bunch of time talking about math at the moment. Uh, you can see for different values, you're gonna get different results. So they started at three. And I ran it and we get the same results. Of course, we have decimals in here because I went with float instead of int, but it will work either way.